On today's episode of Green Hell VR Science, we are going to look at the Brazilian wandering spider, how much damage it does, how much venom it has, and what you need to know to avoid stepping on one of these. So as you can see, once they get close to you, they will actually stand up on their back legs and just stand there posing at you. From what I can tell, if I don't move, neither will the spider. This is important to note because that means that if you are just standing in one particular spot in the jungle, this particular spider will never actually walk to you and sting you. Once it gets close, it stops, goes into this pose, and then waits to see what you do next. If I were to back up, he will lose the aggro that he has on me. He'll come back down onto all eight legs and then move in a different direction. Spider, I said you were going to move in a different direction. And go. You know, it's so hard to find good help these days. At any rate, if I would come up on him again, he will go back into that pose. Now, he will follow me if I am to rotate around him, which is impressive. But once you break away, he does start walking again in a different direction. And generally, it is a different direction than what he was originally traveling. That means the player actually has the ability to change the path or trajectory of the spider. Now, I don't see how that would be particularly useful. Uh, you can't place objects in front of the spider to detour it at all. It's only once you aggro it and then it goes back to normal, it'll just pick another random direction and start walking. Spiders, originally when I started playing the game, I always assumed that spiders moved from one path to another. For instance, I would assume that maybe he would start at this light and he would move across the airfield to that rock. And then from that rock, he would go to that banana tree. From that banana tree, he would go back to that tree. I always assumed it was set paths. And there was a there were as many paths possible that it would give a degree of randomness to the spider. But in all reality, how they have it programmed is that there's a general area that this spider can appear in. It will spawn somewhere within that area and it has free reign of every everything within that particular area. He can move in any direction at any time and as long as he stays inside that area, that's what they're looking for. So the good news for the spider is that it will allow him to become more random as far as the placement where he is as opposed to the player. But at the same time, you're still going to have to watch where you're going. Um, now that we know that this spider will just stop and pose when you get close, that does mean that from a proximity standpoint, you do pretty much have to directly step on this particular spider in order for him to bite you. So let's see exactly how close you can get before he bites you. Now for this particular experiment, I'm going to remove my armor and just have my bare leg and hope that I can actually get him to bite my left leg. Okay. So he has aggro on me now. So I will just slowly inch closer. Oh God. This is kind of horrifying to force yourself to get bit by a spider. <laughs> it like goes against everything you've been trained as a human to do. Ugh. Okay, so that's about a foot, I would say. Okay, one bite. He does three doses of venom and one fever. So I have some bone infusion soup just chilling out here. So let's grab one of these. Do Nope, wrong leg. Okay, then for our next experiment, we're actually going to put on armor and see if that makes any difference. Hello, spider.
So while I wait for the venom to go away, let's just actually sit here and see if he does ever get tired of me and move off without me leaving first. Another thing to notice with these is if you're directly in front of it, you can hear the spider sound, but it's not particularly strong. If you turn your head, however, to where he is 90 degrees to the left of me, I can hear him really loudly in my left ear. And the same applies to if I would turn this direction, I can now hear it really prominently in my right ear. I assume this is on purpose because it does make it more likely that you won't notice in time that you're about to step on a spider. Uh, that's one of the reasons why when I'm running through the jungle, I tend to serpentine a little bit. So I'll actually move my head back and forth. It it allows your the, the sides of your headset to pick up on the spider in front of you a lot easier than if you just run straight ahead without turning your head at all. So that's a tip that you can try is to just kind of weave back and forth almost like a serpentine and then it makes it easier to hear the spider in front of you. Okay, the venom is gone. What that means my bandage should be gone and he is still just sitting here waiting on me. So double check. Okay, bandage is gone. Leaf armor is at 100%. Let's see if there is any difference when wearing armor. Okay, again, that's about a foot, so it's it is close or further away than I would have expected it. Eighty three percent. Interesting. So there's the same amount of venom and fever applied, but seventeen percent loss on your leaf armor that's interesting so the leaf armor has no impact whatsoever on the spider but he does take quite the chunk out of it interesting okay next we have uh lay or where did i put it oh stick armor 100 percent stick armor okay all right, so I have 100% stick armor on my left leg now. We're going to see what the difference is with stick armor. Okay. okay, Roger, kind of a jerk. 92%, so 8% durability loss on stick armor when being bit by a Brazilian wandering spider. Okay, next piece of armor will be bone. Okay, 100% bone armor. So, yeah, foot and a half, probably. And bone armor is 5%, so that is less still. Now... One more test with armadillo armor. Doop, doop, doop. Oh. Also 5%. Okay. Uh, can I use this? No, oh, I cannot. All right. Time for an intermission then. So it would appear that I jumped directly into the rainy season after my last armadillo test with the Brazilian wandering spider. So apologies for the lighting and the rain to finish this up, but I wanted to just take a close look at the spider. And it is kind of horrifying to know that these actually exist in the real world. I mean, compared to like the size of your hand, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, so you do actually have about a foot proximity where it can bite you when you get too close to it. It does three points of venom and one point of fever. And that is per bite. So if you get stung by it or bit by it and you don't move, it will keep biting you and it will stack the effect. So each one will be three points of venom and one point of fever. 
It will also do damage to your armor. Um, on leaf armor, the number was 17% armor loss. For stick armor, it was uh, 8 points. Uh, let's see. Eight points of armor. Bone armor, it lost 5% durability, and the same with armadillo armor, it lost five points of durability from the spider bite. And so, the last thing that I've always been curious about with these spiders is what does it actually do if you consume one? Um, I wouldn't advise this regardless of what effect it has, <laughs> but. I noticed while I was holding it that there is actually a consume action. So let's find out what it does when you eat a Brazilian wandering spider. Yeah. Yes. And so as you can see, that is why I vomit so much in this game. <laughs> because I test things like that. But... I'm so used to this. I have some food poisoning medicine. And there you go. So at least you can minimize the effects of food poisoning by randomly eating things that even you know you shouldn't eat. But there you have it. Eating a Brazilian wandering spider will give you three debuffs of food poisoning. All right, I think that about wraps it up. I'll go ahead and put the numbers on the screen again so you could see them and i think that does it for this this episode of spider science thanks for watching guys if you like the video like it if you dislike it dislike it and if you'd like to keep seeing videos like this feel free to let me know subscribe or leave a comment thanks have a great day and see you next time